Hello, welcome to Edexcel GCSE 9 to 1 History Revision. I'm Elizabeth in England, and today we'll be focusing on colonisation of Roanoke. This 16 marker will be the basis for the following tutorial. The main reason why efforts to colonise Virginia failed was due to poor planning. How far do you agree? Before we can answer this question, we're going to have a little bit of an overview of some of the mistakes that Walter Riley and the colonists made during the first attempt to colonise Virginia and the second attempt on the same island of Roanoke. So if we have a look at this map of Virginia and you're focusing on the little set of islands in the bottom left hand side of your map, more towards the bottom middle, um, these are the islands of Croaton and Roanoke. And they're not too far away from the successful colony of Jamestown. Therefore, why did Jamestown succeed? And more importantly, why did the first two attempts to colonise Virginia fail? The main person responsible for planning the Roanoke expedition was Walter Riley, a famous explorer and courtier during the reign of Elizabeth I. The foundations of the, of the trip were actually pretty solid. He had gone on an exploration mission in 1584. He brought back two Native Americans called Mantio and Wanchis, and he actually got a little bit of sponsorship from Elizabeth herself. So it should actually have worked. However, Riley ran into difficulties very early on. Out of his 300 desired colonists with a variety of skills from building, farming um, and fighting, he only managed to get 107. Most of these were men, almost half of them were soldiers, and many were attracted by the promise of making their fortune in Virginia, most of them having unrealistic expectations of what it was going to take to found a new colony. Given the fact that Riley wanted 300 colonists but could only get 107, he had already set out too late. The ships left England on the 9th of April 1585 and with a journey of several weeks ahead of them, this was already too late for planting some of the crops they needed to see them through the winter. They also made the huge mistake of putting all of their supplies on the Tiger ship, which when they arrived at Roanoke, took on water and sank. The colonists realised that after their supplies had been destroyed on board the Tiger ship and winter was soon approaching, that they would need to go and forage for food. This means collecting nuts and berries, and this is quite a long, tedious task. Soldiers and the rich were not prepared to do the work. They had come along with the promise of glory and land, and the farmers and the poorer colonists were not prepared to do the work for the rich people. These previous features are examples of poor planning, poor preparation and unrealistic expectations by the colonists. The next couple of features that we will discuss are examples of poor leadership. In particular, the two main leaders of the first expedition, Richard Grenville and Ralph Lane, and the leader of the second expedition, John White. Richard Grenville was a very experienced sailor and soldier and prided himself on having a reputation of being feared. He also had a very hot temper. For example, on one occasion, he lost his silver cup and decided to blame some of the natives which they had made friendly relations with. As a result, he burned down the entire village and then left the colonists to fend for themselves when he went back to England to look for help. No supplies no way of feeding themselves, no leader, and now no relationship with the natives, the job of colonising Virginia had just got more difficult. Ralph Lane had been appointed governor of Virginia by Walter Riley prior to the expedition being launched. With Grenville out of the picture, Ralph Lane was now in charge. He had made the decision that the best form of defence was offence. As a result, he decided to launch an attack on the Native Americans, specifically going for the chief of the local Aguascococ tribe, Chief Wingina. Ralph Lane's men captured Wingina and had him executed. This turned not just the Roanokeans, but the whole of southern Virginia, all of the different tribes, turned against the colonists and actually chased the colonists off the island. The colonists were so quick to escape that they actually left three people behind. Therefore, due to a number of different issues, poor planning lack of realistic expectations, poor leadership and poor relationships with the natives, the first mission failed. Two years later, there was a second attempt to colonise Virginia, led by one of the surviving colonists, John White, 
John White was an artist, had no experience of exploration beyond the first mission. He had no experience of what it took to build a colony. And more importantly, they decided to set out round about the same time. So again, similar mistakes were made to the first attempt. The second mission to Virginia was determined not to make the same mistakes as the first, and they actually aimed to land on a part of Virginia known as Chesapeake Bay. However, during the expedition, John White and the ship's captain, a man called Simon Fernando, constantly argued about who was actually in charge of the mission. Fernando got very frustrated with John White, and instead of putting him on Chesapeake Bay, landed back in Roanoke. Given the English track record of spreading diseases, burning down villages, and just being generally untrustworthy, as you can imagine, there was a very bad relationship between the Native Americans and the second colonists, aside from one tribe, the Croaton tribe. The Croatons were willing to help the colonists until there was a huge case of mistaken identity, whereby the colonists attacked members of the Croaton tribe by accident because they mistaken them for other aggressive Native Americans. As you can imagine, this completely damaged the relationship between the natives and the colonists. As a result, the mission was doomed to fail. After receiving no news from the new colony set up in Virginia, Elizabeth sent Francis Drake to go and investigate what had happened. He arrived at Roanoke in 1589, and there was no sign of any, any colonists. No bodies, no clothes, no evidence that there had ever been a colony at all, except for one solitary word scratched into a tree, which says Croatoan. Let's now apply that knowledge to this question. The colonisation of Virginia failed mainly due to poor planning. How far do you agree? You may use, but you don't have to, Walter Riley. You may use unrealistic expectations. You are expected to use information of your own. If you don't use any information of your own, you're likely to get roughly half marks. There are five key elements to any good paragraph, and that is an opening point or an opening statement. Backing that statement up with own knowledge we're talking statistics, people, event states, if you want to get that higher grade. Basic explanation where you're using words like because, this means, as a result. Developing that explanation with further causal sentences. This led to, consequently, all of this meant that. But the most important part for these 16 markers, or 20 markers if you're on paper one, is the judgment. This is your prioritisation of different factors and you explaining that one reason is more important than another. This person has got the basic structure of the paragraph. They've got a point, they've got some old knowledge, they've got some basic explanation and some developed explanation, and a little bit of judgment. If we're focusing on the judgment element of this question, you can see from answer one that they've agreed with the statement in paragraph one, and then disagreed with the statement in paragraph two. In neither paragraph have they explained in any real detail why they agree or why they disagree. They haven't even said whether they agree more or they disagree more. They've left that right until the very end in the conclusion. So the previous answer might be enough to get you level four, or level five, depending on what the grey boundaries are. This answer is much stronger. As you can see, follow the same structure, point, evidence, explanation, developed explanation, judgment, but they've also got a third paragraph in there as well. But again, you can still see at the bottom of every paragraph, they've just said that they agree with the statement, disagree with statement, disagree with statement. The previous answer is strong. It has got statistics, people, events, dates, developed explanation and some judgment, but it's probably only good enough to get maybe a six, possibly a seven, depending on the grey boundaries. If we take that answer and we add a little bit more judgment onto the end of each paragraph, demonstrating which reason is the most important and least important, and then really hammering that in your conclusion, you don't have to write lots and lots. The most important reason why, so straight away you're explaining to the examiner or the person reading your work what your opinion is, you can start with the least important reason and work from the bottom to the top if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter as long as you are stating from the beginning what order your answer is going in.
For example, Riley couldn't get volunteers quick enough, so they set out in winter. They also put all of their supplies onto one ship. This led to the colony failing because the ship sank, which meant the colonists struggled to survive. Consequently, during the winter months, it was even more difficult to survive, as the colonists had no way of feeding themselves. Therefore, I agree with the statement, as poor planning made the mission more difficult. This poor planning would make all other problems more challenging, such as unrealistic expectations and poor relations with natives. Another reason why Virginia failed was unrealistic expectations. For example, some of the settlers were inexperienced in farming and inspected it would be easy to gather enough food. Some of the settlers were nobles who expected the poor people to do all of the work. This led to the colony failing because the people did not anticipate having to forage for food or how difficult it would be. Furthermore, the rich did not expect to do any of the work at all, which again made the mission more difficult. The difference here between this answer and the one that we've just gone through is that at the end of each paragraph, we keep coming back to our original argument, and this is a good way of prioritising and comparing the different issues. In comparison to poor planning, unrealistic expectations was less important. Had the expedition set out on time and the supplies been split up on different ships, not just the Tiger, the colonists would have had a better chance at survival. Better organisation of the settlers being taken would also have made the mission more successful. The previous answer had three paragraphs. If you just took these first two paragraphs that we've gone through and you add the judgment in, you're probably getting the same number of marks. However, this person is clearly looking for an A, if not a 9, so they've done a third paragraph and they prioritised there as well. A final reason why the Virginia mission failed was due to poor relations with the natives. For example, Richard Grenville burnt down a village and Ralph Lane executed the chief Wingina. This led to the colony failing as the natives were no longer willing to help the colonists. Furthermore, after Wingina's death, the natives attacked the settlers any time they tried to colonise Roanoke. Therefore, any hopes of conquering Virginia failed, which suggests that the statement might not be correct. If the colonists encountered all the problems discussed above, then the colonists may have survived a little bit longer. However, their ultimate goal of conquering the country would not have succeeded if they constantly had to rely on the locals. There's some really good analysis there. So essentially this person is saying that even if they had set out in winter and they'd lost all of their supplies, if they had good relationships with the locals, then they might have survived. What this person then goes on to do is then to link it back to the actual question. If they had all the necessary supplies, arrived at the correct time and took all of the right people, which is what happened with later colonies under James I, the mission would not have failed. In conclusion, poor relations with the natives made the mission more difficult as they declared war against the colonists. The colonists were also not prepared to cooperate and put the hard work in which was required. However, the most important reason, see there again, this person is prioritising their reasons as to why the mission failed. The most important reason was poor planning. Riley took longer than expected to recruit settlers, which were not the right mix, and arrived in winter, whereby planting what little supplies they had left, put the mission in jeopardy before I would argue that this person has probably gained all of the necessary marks even before that final sentence. But just to make sure, just as a general rule of thumb, this is what you should be doing at the end of every paragraph. Make sure that you link back to the question and that you explain your point of view just in case you've missed it anywhere else. Therefore, I agree that poor planning was the main reason why why the Virginia mission failed as it created a harder mission and made problems which came later much worse.